Looks like it's that time again. I'm John Zadar, and this is On Top and Hot. It is Wednesday, April 17th, which means I've got my live streaming event tomorrow. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. When that bell's going off at the end of the day, me and my co-host Taylor are going on live. We're there for... I was going to say an hour, but it's closer to an hour and a half now, trying to squeeze in as many tickers as we can. And we're there for you, the investors, to bring us tickers you want us to look at. I share tickers with you all week, but chances are I'm not covering stocks you want me to. So this gives you a chance to bring them to us. Drop them in the comment box. I'll go over the information. Taylor will cover the charts and we'll give you two opinions, whatever that's worth. Now, to be completely fair and honest with you, if you come to the show and drop your ticker in during the show, I'm never going to get to it. I have to announce I'm going to be doing the video so people show up, and I do that around noon. Well, you can drop your tickers in then, and I do go by first come, first serve. It's the only fair way I could think about doing it. So by the time 4 o'clock rolls around, I've already got enough stocks to cover the show, so I can't get to anything in the show. I do apologize for that. My point, though, Get your ticker in early. Go to my YouTube uh, page, find the video, or I will post it at noon on Twitter, a couple Facebook pages, and my Discord group. Find any one of those. Open it up. The video isn't going to be playing, but the comment box is open. You can put your comment in there, your ticker, and that'll give me more time to go over it so you'll get more bang for your buck. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, tomorrow, every Thursday. So what I like to do on this show is focus in on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks. they are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And I'm always looking for stocks that have potential, that have heat. Well, I found one today that I want to share with you. This is ticker S-I-N-T, Syntex Technologies. Now, I've got a habit of posting news every single day from 7.20 in the morning to 9.30. I post as much news as I can find on penny stocks and as many runners as I can find. Now, there's a lot more than I can handle, but I do get a lot of it out there. I put it on Twitter, Facebook, and my Discord group. Well, I posted news about this one. It wasn't exactly news, though. It was a filing. It wasn't even put out in the news press, and it was bad news. It was about a reverse split. Well, as soon as the bell went off, the stock jumped. I mean, it took off. And I'm thinking, why would this be running like this? I understand dark catalysts and all. Bad news sometimes causes the stock to jump, though I don't understand why. So I dove into this a little bit deeper, and I think I understand maybe why it's running. This reverse split isn't going to be all bad for the company. So cent, she finished today at about three and a half cents and she was up 58% today. Now this is a penny stock on the major exchange, the NASDAQ, which is going to come with benefits compared to the OTC. First off, you get to trade this pre-market aftermarket. You never get that opportunity with an OTC stock and there's a lot of money to be made in those free periods. Also, there's a lot more money and volume up on the major exchanges, a heck of a lot more than on the OTC. And what I really appreciate about the major exchanges are all their rules. I love the fact that they are forcing these companies to obey these rules. We don't get that down at the OTC, so we get taken a lot by companies that say one thing and do another. So I just find it safer to trade these penny stocks on the major exchange. So what is Syntex all about? Well, we're going to start here and float around to get this information. Syntex Technology is a 25-year-old advanced ceramics company formed in December of 1996. The company has grown from focusing primarily on the research and development and commercialization of medical devices manufactured with silicon nitrate to becoming an advanced ceramics company engaged in diverse fields, including biomedical, industrial, anti-pathogenic applications. Now, I've jumped on over here to the most recent news press to get a different version of that description. Syntex Technologies is an advanced ceramics company that develops and commercializes materials, components, and technologies for the medical, technical, industrial, and military applications. Syntex is a global leader in the research, development, and manufacturing of silicon nitride, and its products have been implanted in humans since 2008. You didn't see that coming, did you? 
Over the past two years, Syntex has utilized strategic acquisitions and alliances to enter into new markets. The company has manufacturing facilities in Utah and Maryland. Now, I was really interested in those strategic acquisitions and alliances. I was looking for a list. You know, I couldn't find it. I do see names of this company popped here and another company dropped there. But to actually find a list of everybody they're working with, I couldn't find that. But I do have more information on their website. So this is the company's website, Syntex.com. It's a real good website. Got lots of information here. You can learn all about what the company is about and doing. Learn about their management. The different types of materials that they're adding to their ceramics so that they can create different types that have different features and characteristics. And the various applications. Now, I can't cover everything that's on this website, but I'm going to try to share some of the important stuff. Now, the company's been around for almost 30 years, and the technology that they were using back then with the ovens and the castings and the forms, they're still doing that, but they've got new technologies that they're using now, which allows them to enter industries they could never enter before, because now they can make parts and pieces they could never make before. So, I'm going to start right here with these OEM Ceramic Armor Solutions. OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturers. Normally, these are real big companies. And this product is going to be used with law enforcement, aerospace, defense, and the military. Syntex is a leading manufacturer of ceramic armor plates and panels using technical ceramics that combine ballistic performance and are extremely lightweight, making them the ideal choice for ground vehicles, aircraft, marine vessels, and even body armor. Our advanced ceramic technology and deep manufacturing expertise can be leveraged to create a highly customizable OEM armor solution for any defense system. Whoa! And they are using them all sorts of ways. They are putting these on helicopters, they are putting them on jeeps, on tanks, and they say that they are going to be making body armor. Now, I don't know, is this something you're going to be wearing or is it going to be a shield like the Vikings had? As you can see in the picture, they do make this stuff clear, crystal clear like glass, and it's bulletproof. So couldn't you make a shield and just be bouncing all those bullets off protecting yourself? I'm not saying they've got that product. I'm saying they could make it, right? Now, they have a new type of technology they're using, 3D printing for ceramics. Who'd have thunk it? Now, this is really interesting because the company is vertically integrated, meaning they cover every aspect of their business from start to finish. Everything, including the research and development, and they have created four specialty resins for their ceramic 3D printer. These are their four resins. Each one creates a product that has different strengths, different features and characteristics. And I just want to touch on to each one so you get an idea. Our proprietary high-density alumina is the result of years of research and development and is specially tailored to the applications demanding high hardness, corrosion resistance, thermal stability, and electrical insulation. Now, we've been using ceramic for electrical insulation for a long time, but now we can make different types of parts that we could never make before. So, this is going to open up that market for them. Silica is renowned for its exceptional thermal shock resistance and chemical resistance. Our unique formulation has been successfully used to cast single crystal turbine blades, among a host of other applications. Well, you only put blades on ships and airplanes and things like that, and you really have to depend on them, don't you? Then we got zirconia. I think of those zirconian diamonds that were really hard. Zirconia is known for its mechanical strength fracture toughness, wear resistance, and thermal shock resistance for technical components that can withstand high stress and extreme thermal conditions. So, it sounds like they can make a lot of different types of products with these sort of uh, fills. But they've got a third fill here, which is really interesting. We had mentioned before that they have been implanting their products since 2008. This is how they're able to do it. They created a fill called Flex SN Peak for biomedical. Flex SN Peak is a novel composite of implantable grades of silicon nitrate and peak, which are now available as a filler for 3D printing. This material represents a significant leap forward by blending silicon nitrate's favorable biocompatibility, 
tissue integration and resistance to bacteria with Peak's well-known versatility and bone-like mechanical properties. Recent research has demonstrated that printed flex NN Peak's ability to risk colonization by common orthopedic bacteria and to be printed into implantable devices far exceeds industry mechanically property requirements. This is better than anything they've ever had. Folks, when you 3D print something, it is very precise, exact. Further, devices printed, products printed using this material may be printed in the clinic without the lead times or the heavy equipment requirements traditionally associated with ceramic processing. Now think about this, folks. You could have a little printing machine at the dentist at the doctors. You could be right in the middle of back surgery. They open up your back and they see one of your discs is fractured. Well, they'll scan that with a 3D uh, scanner, enter that information into the computer, that will be sent over to the printer, and right now they will print an exact duplicate of your vertebrae disc so that they can pull that one out and put this one in. The dentist will be able to make a tooth for you right there. And there's a lot of other applications with these implantables that I am not aware of. So that is a huge market, but it's not the only market they're interested in. They are working with all of those other markets, which they feel are going to actually be bigger than the medical market. Now, one of their uh, divisions, their subsidiaries is technology assessment and transfer. This is their research and development company. As far as I can tell, they are primarily inventing all of these different resins. So as I said, they cover every aspect of their business from start to finish, and they are working in a lot of industries. And what they can do is just now becoming apparent. They are going to be able to do so much with their different types of ceramic. All right, let's go take a look at that news, and we're going to get more information about why I think this company could start to run after her reverse split. Yeah, I know. Scent is a major exchange stock. So what the heck am I doing back here at the OTCMarkets.com website? Well, contrary to popular belief, they don't just carry OTC stocks. They carry every stock. This would be a great place for you to do your due diligence and research as well. So we're going to start off by looking at the relative volume for Scent. And oh my God, look at that, folks. That is a literal explosion. Her relative volume has gone up over 35 times. You're talking 3,500% from roughly 14 million shares a day as an average over the last 30 days to almost 475 million shares today. Folks, that's a lot of extra shares. That's a lot of extra excitement considering we've got a reverse split hanging over our head. Share structure for the company. All right. This is where the game begins. There's a lot of details we got to get straight here. They tell us our outstanding share count as of March 11th of this year was only 22 million. And they are going to be doing a reverse split. Well, let's focus in on what's really going on here. I'm going to jump into two filings and two news presses that directly talk about the stock. First filing, they got notified by the NASDAQ that they are not meeting their minimum bid price requirement. Hence, the reverse stock split. They didn't just do this once. They did it twice. They were notified back in October of last year. They failed to meet the $1 minimum bid price requirement. You go under a dollar for too long, you get a warning. You don't fix it, they throw you off the OTC. How can they fix it? Well, the proper way to fix it is for us investors to bid that price up over a dollar and keep it over a dollar 10 days straight. It has to close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. Then they're out of hot water. Well, they didn't do that. Then they got a second strike. They fell under 10 cents for the last 10 days. Now they're in really hot water. It looks like they're OTC bound or going to do a reverse stock split. But they tell us here that the company plans to appeal it. And if they do this in time and it is approved, it will be pushed until October 7th. They'll have that long to get the price up over a dollar. If they don't make it by then, they'll either have to do a reverse stock split or they're going down to the OTC market. But to do a reverse stock split, they first got to get shareholder approval. So one of the filings is a scheduled shareholder meeting 
for May 14th, where we're going to be voting on a reverse stock split of no less than 1 to 100 and no greater than 1 to 300. And this is used at management's discretion anytime they want over the next 12 months. They don't have to look for any more authorization or approval, don't even have to give us any further notice when they're going to do it. It'll just happen. The other piece of uh, information I want to share with you comes from the news. We have a heck of a lot more than 22 million shares. They had two public offerings this year so far. One March 25th for 1.3 million. That added an extra 28 million shares, and they were selling those at 4.7 cents a piece. Then about a month later, they had another public offering on April 3rd. This was for 1.5 million, and they were selling them for less than half the price they did the month before. Now they're only 2.1 cents, and they sold 71 million of those. So you've got 71, 28, that's 99, that's like 100, 100 million, let's just call it 100 million, plus the 22 here. So we've got 122 million shares that are most likely going to be going through a reverse stock split if they don't get things fixed. So what would that leave us? Well, if you have 122 million shares and you divide it by 100, you're going to be left with 1.2 million shares outstanding. If you do a 1 in 300, you're going to be left with something like 450,000 shares both of those numbers are way too freaking low, folks. They're real low. The stock will move super fast, but that's not what I'm talking about. There is a minimum float requirement on the NASDAQ. You can't have anything less than 1 million shares. So how do you fix that? Well, that one's easy. They just do a public offering. But I'm thinking that this super small float after the reverse stock split has got people excited. But there's other things to consider as well. Now, as you can see, the market cap right now is really small. We're just barely over a half a million dollars. Let's scope out the financials for Cent now. Well, she's been growing over the last four years, starting off slow. 2020, we were just under $600,000. We know it's thousands because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Then pushed it up to just a little over $600,021. 2022, she more than doubles that, jumping to 1.5 million. And at the end of 2023, we were up to 2.6 million. And we got to take home well over 50% of that in profit. Looking at her quarterlies, eh, she's been up and down, but she's on a high note right now. Uh, the last quarter in December of 2023, she hit $902,000 in three months. And again, she got to take home more than 50% of that in profit. Checking out that balance sheet. We got money in the bank, $3.3 million. Total assets, about $15 million. Total liabilities, yes, it's lower, $6.5 million, which gives us stockholder equity of $8.7 million. Looking pretty good. Disclosures. We already covered the disclosures I wanted to look at. There was the 8 k for the notification from the NASDAQ and the DEF and 14A, this is the one that actually told us about the meeting, where the reverse stock split came from. Somebody was asking me about that earlier. All right, let's take a look at that news now. We do have a piece of news to look at because we've already looked at the other two pieces. There's not a lot of news here. So we had our $1.3 million public offering in March, and then we had the one5 in April. But we had a piece of news back here in February on the 21st. They tell us that the company entered into a second long-term supply agreement for the aerospace market. And in all of this, they don't mention what the first deal is. We're only talking about the second, so I have no clue. Some more due diligence is going to be necessary. They tell us here that Syntex Technologies announced today that it has entered into a 10-year long-term agreement with a leading manufacturer of aerospace components and systems. Under the LTA, long-term agreement, Syntex will manufacture and supply key ceramic aircraft engine components, which have been qualified through a rigorous evaluation process. We are excited to serve our customers who are a world leader in the aerospace systems. And that's as much information as they give us. We don't know how much money they make yearly. We don't know what their name is. And we don't know who the first deal is with. This agreement is another step forward for Syntec as the company continues its strategic shift to expand its customer base beyond the biomedical sector. 
and this deal is valued at a potential $8 million over the life of the agreement. So they've got more agreements than I've been able to find. So you need to do some more research. They've got companies that they have acquired. They've got companies they've made partnerships with. And I always say, you can tell a strong company by who they're associating with with other companies. Are other companies wanting to align with them? Are they wanting to partner? Then the company's got value. The company's legitimate. And I would love to see that information. So if you guys come across it, don't be bashful. Drop it in the comments. I love to be educated as well. All right, let's go take a look at that chart now. Yeah, it looks like a real ugly chart, doesn't it? Well, you can't see the heat at the very tail there. This is ticker S-I-N-T, Syntex Technologies, and we're going to chart it on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. Got this opened up to a six-month, four-hour view, and as you can see, she has been in a downtrend all this time. Six months ago, we had a high of $1.62, and it was April 12th, we hit a low of just over two cents. Now, we've got some strong supports in this chart, but they are way high. This is up here at 13 cents. This one here is at 37 cents. And we're not even going to consider how the chart's going to be after the reverse stock split because we don't know. If they do a one in 100, our stock's going to be between two and three dollars. They do a one in 300, we'll be nearer to six to nine dollars. So we're going to just look at the chart as it is right now. She has been in this serious downtrend and she just keeps finding new lower levels to drop to. She isn't actually going anywhere. She isn't making any attempts to try to break out. But here, just today, she started doing something unusual on the bad news of the reverse stock split. She started the jump. All this volume came in and she is pushing up hard. All of our osculators are looking strong. Coming on down to that, 20 day, one hour view. Little clearer now. She broke through the 200 up here. She got through it temporarily and then had this huge bottom out all the way down to this new low level, dropping from 14 cents down here to four cents. Then she dropped again. Then she dropped again. She just keeps falling. Finally, the 200 day SMA caught up to her again. And with the bad news and the 200 being close, she took advantage and she broke out, coming out from underneath all the SMAs to on top of all the SMAs, looking beautiful. She is floating on that nine day SMA climbing even after market hours right now. Osculators, all of them are strong. Every single one of them is pushing up. Our RSI has dipped a little bit, but it's clear up there at 67 right now. Taking a look at our five day, five minute. See, she wasn't doing anything. She was laying on the 200. Then she took this dip, which pulled the 200 down, got back up on top of it. And yesterday she started showing some signs. I don't know why, but she started the climb. We had a little hiccup here, pre-market, went flat. And that bad news caused this thing to jump from 2.3 cents up to 4.6. That was a 100% jump. And when did it hit this high? That was at 1040. So just a little over an hour, we had 100% gains. Then she came all the way back down here, hitting 2.6, starting off down here at 2.3. So that was a lot of loss. Then she started to climb with these big bangs, lots of volatility. After market period, she really shot up again, came back down. Is she landing on that 50? It looks like the 50 is her primary support here. There she goes. She is still climbing. She has finally turned that 200-day SMA up. Lots of volume today. Yes, it is getting less and less right now. Osculators are cooling off right now, but I think she's worth a watch. We need to see if this appeal gets approved by the NASDAQ so that we can push off any bad things happening to the company until October. If that doesn't get approved, then they're going to have to go through with that shareholder meeting on May 14th, which gives us up to May 14th, to see if they're going to do a reverse stock split. And then we'll have to see how big it is. And hopefully they'll give us a date. They don't have to, but hopefully they will. So we're seeing a lot of activity in this stock, even though she hasn't got a lot of good news. She's going to have a super 
super duper low float, regardless of which split they do, 100 or 300, it is going to be very low. And I would expect a public offering to follow up behind it. But in the meantime, once that split happens, this stock could be hot because the company has value. They have contracts. They've been around for 30 years. They're not a risky company. They're not a startup company. So I like Scent. I just think it needs more due diligence. I could not cover everything that they do. I couldn't even find all the people that they're working with. Please do some more due diligence and share whatever you find with me. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.